Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you are our God who reveals yourself to the world. And we thank you that you have revealed yourself to us through Jesus so that we can see the light of your glory. We pray, Lord, that as we hear your word again today, that you will continue to speak to us. Open our ears that we may hear. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Dear friends of Jesus, our Savior, so who do you look like? You look like more like your mom, look more like your dad. Maybe you look like a grandma or a grandpa. Maybe you have similarities with your cousins, or maybe you look like an aunt or an uncle. Maybe you look like your twin, but maybe not, because not all twins look alike. I've always been told when I was little that people said, you can tell you are a Harmon, that's for sure. Maybe people have told you that you've looked like a celebrity. When we were in college, people told my wife Tammy that she looked like Justin Bateman or Sandra Bullock. People told me I look like J Michael J. Fox. Some people said from my side profile I look like Paul McCartney. And then as I turned gray, people said I started looking like and sounding like Jay Leno. <laughs> Without the big chin, but maybe it's because we both have a lisp. Some people, have you noticed they look like their pets? Here, take a look at the people. They look like their dogs. And I think they're proud of that. So again, who do you look like? When God created Adam and Eve, he created them in his image. And what that means is they were like God in the sense that they were perfect and they were reflecting God's image. But as soon as sin came into the world... They and everyone else no longer reflected the image of God. They no longer loved God first and loved each other and served one another. They started loving creation, loving themselves, and then doing what was only in their best interest. And they started doing things that ought not to be done. Listen to what we read in Galatians chapter 5, beginning with verse 19. Galatians chapter 5 beginning with verse 19, talks about the acts of the sinful nature. So Galatians chapter 5, beginning with verse 19 says, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. See the difference between the way Adam and Eve were living in the image of God in perfect creation until, and then when sin has come into the world, and because of sin, because sin has come into the world, and then people are no longer reflecting the image of God. Because of sin, our sinful nature does what is contrary to the Spirit. And that means when sin came to the world, the image of God was lost. But then God has been working to restore the image of God and to restore people into his likeness. Now we see this in part when Moses goes up on Mount Sinai. Because when Moses goes on top of the mountain, we know that God is with him. He's in the presence of God. God is speaking to him. God is giving him the law. And when he comes down with the revealed law of God to the people, and he doesn't even notice it, his face is radiant. It is shining. It's glowing. So much so when Aaron and the other leaders see him, they're afraid of him. They don't want to go near him. But Moses comes near, he speaks to them, and when he's done speaking to them, he puts the veil back over his face. And then it says when he goes into the presence of God, because they had the tent of meeting, when he goes into the presence of God, when he listens to God, he takes the veil off when he's in God's presence. And then he goes back and he speaks to the people again, and when he's done speaking, he puts the veil back over his face. You might be thinking he's putting his, the veil over his face to keep them from seeing the shining face, but that's not why he does that. 
He does it, it says in Scripture, to keep them from gazing at his face while it is dimming. Not because it's shining, but it's dimming. And the reason for this is that the glory of the old covenant, the law, is only temporary. But the glory of the new covenant is coming, and it is going to be eternal. It is going to be glorious. So three of Jesus' disciples get a glimpse of God's glory in Jesus Christ, who is the new covenant. It says in the Gospel of Mark, after six days, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up on the mountain. So after six days, what just happened? It was after six days that Peter confessed that Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus then tells his disciples that he is going uh, to be abused, that he's going to be uh, uh, abused by the teachers of the law, the elders, and the Sadducees. He's going to then be put to death on a cross, and then on the third day, he's going to be raised again to life. And it was after these things, after the confession of the disciples, and after Jesus tells them about his death and resurrection, he takes the three disciples up on a high mountain, and there it says, he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them, and there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. So why six days? Why does it give those that, that the days six days? Because if we go to Exodus chapter 24, I think this gives us some understanding of why they waited six days. Exodus chapter 24, beginning with verse 15, says, When Moses went up on the mountain, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord settled on the Mount Sinai. For six days the cloud covered the mountain, and on the seventh day the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. Then Moses entered the cloud as he went on top of the mountain, and he stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. So see the similarities? The cloud in the Old Testament covered the mountain. The glory of God covered the mountain for six days. And on the seventh day, God spoke to Moses. In the gospel, we read that they waited six days, and then on the seventh day, they went up on the mountain, the cloud covered the mountain, and on the seventh day, God spoke. Six days, God speaks on the seventh. Six day, God speaks on the seventh. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Jesus, his face and his clothes shining bright as the sun, as his as clean as you can get your clothes, even brighter than that? Can you imagine all that is happening on that mountain? And not only that, but then we also see and read that Moses and Elijah are there on that mountain talking to Jesus. Why are they there? Because they are giving testimony that everything that the prophets said about the Messiah is true. And that Jesus is the Messiah, in case people are wondering if he was. And then if that wasn't enough, then we have the Father. He speaks from the cloud. He says, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. And so we have the Messiah has come. The prophets have spoken. They said, yes, he's the one. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior. God has spoken. God the Father says, this is my son whom I love. And Jesus is the Messiah. Because he's the one who was revealing the glory of God to his disciples. Peter loved it. He wanted to build three shelters, one for Jesus, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Actually, I think he wanted to build three shelters for himself because he wanted to stay up on the mountain and bask in the glory of God. Who wouldn't? Because remember, Jesus already told them what has to happen. And maybe if they just stay on the mountain, that is not going to happen. How many times have you been on a mountaintop experience? You don't want to go back down the mountain because of you knew what was waiting for you. 
So there in their mountain, Peter wants to build three shelters. He wants to stay on the mountain. He wants to bask in the glory of God. And then, can you imagine, it doesn't say that he's doing this, but can you imagine him talking to Moses? Hey, what was it like to cross the Red Sea on dry land? Did you touch the water with your hand as you went through? Or maybe as he was speaking to Elijah, what was it like to go up into heaven in a whirlwind without tasting death? What was that like? And then think of this. This is something I just was revealed to me this past week. I've never thought about this before. Moses is in the promised land. Because remember Moses, he disobeyed God. And when Moses disobeyed God, God said, you're not going into the promised land. You can only see it from a distance. And then he died. But now we read Moses is in the promised land. I think that's fascinating. Now, it doesn't compare to where he's been for the last thousand years or so. <laughs> but he's in the promised land. He's there. And so, again, again, you can just imagine that. Well, Peter is speaking, and then all of a sudden, he's interrupted. The, the cloud envelops him, and the cloud speaks. It's God the Father. He said, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Listen to what he already told you. Listen to what he's going to tell you again. Because he will show his glory. When you go down the mountain, he's going to show his glory again, but it's going to be in a not so glorious way. He's going to show his glory when he goes on a mount, another mountain and he's nailed to a cross. And it's going to be on that mountain, Mount Calvary where then he's going to give up his spirit and he dies. And when everything seems hopeless, when everything seems like it's lost and everything is just ruined, he's going to be displaying his glory in a greater way than he did even on the Mount of Transfiguration. He's going to be display, displaying his glory on the cross as he defeats our enemies of sin, death, and the devil. How do we know that? Because on the third day, God the Father raised him to life. God raised him to life, and now because he lives, he continues to transform people into the likeness of Jesus. So the people can shine with the brightness of Christ. And so just think of how the disciples' lives were changed after Jesus rose from the dead and he gave the promised Holy Spirit, their, their lives completely changed because they were afraid, they were traumatized, they then became bold and courageous, they were living in darkness, they were afraid, they were behind locked doors, and all of a sudden they were living in the light of Jesus Christ. They were letting the light of Christ shine through their lives because that's what happens when a person comes to faith in Christ when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon us that we begin to shine with the light of Jesus. We're changed, we're transformed into the likeness of God's Son because that's what we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It says, And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with an ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. And so what it says is that we who've been given faith in Jesus Christ by his Spirit are being transformed into his likeness with an ever-increasing glory. And then in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, but you are a chosen people. Who's he talking about? He's talking to Christians, believers. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And then verse 10 says, you were once, not a, you, once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you did not receive mercy, but now you have received mercy mercy because of light of jesus christ we who were not the people of god became the people of god and then in matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16 jesus says you are the light of the world a city on a hill cannot be hidden neither do people light a lamp and put it under his bowl 
Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your glory, they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And so Jesus, God is in the business of transforming people's lives, taking them out of living in darkness of sin and death and bringing them into light of Jesus Christ. He is transforming people's lives, including yours and mine, who believe in Jesus to be more and more like his son, Jesus. Thankfully, through faith in Jesus Christ, the veil that once covered our hearts to see Jesus for who he is has been removed. Something that the old covenant could never do. Because it is by the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, that Christ now lives in us by his spirit. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Because God lives in us by his Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, we have new hope, we have new freedom, we have new boldness. We have this new hope because God is not hidden from us, but God continues to reveal his glory to us. He reveals his glory to us every time we, Christ is preached to us. We receive the glory of God every time Jesus speaks to us through his word, and we see the glory of God every time we come to the Lord's table where we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of all of our sins. And we see the glory of God whenever another Christian is loving God, loving us, and loving others. You see, as Christ is living in us, and as we gather together as God's people, God is displaying his glory more and more in us. And that's why it's so important. It is so important for us to gather together as God's people on a regular basis. It's important for us to worship together. It's so important for us to be in God's word together. It's important for us uh, to continue to come to the Lord's table together because when we do, as we hear God's word, as we receive the sacrament, as we receive Christ himself, together we are being transformed into the likeness of Christ so that we can live and shine his glory into the world. Again, the image of God was lost when sin came into the world. But thankfully, God restored that in us by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And because of Christ, because of God's spirit living in us, we are now able to love God and to love our neighbor. Something the world desperately needs. Because if our world is ever going to change for the better, it's going to be because Christians are displaying and reflecting the glory of God in the world. Instead of living our lives only for ourselves according to our sinful nature, we live by the Spirit, the Spirit of God that is living in us. And that is completely opposite the way our sinful nature lives. Because if we go back to Galatians chapter 5, Starting with verse 22, it says, But the, tr the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentle goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So again, who do you look like? Hopefully people will say, you know, you are looking more and more like Jesus. And when they don't know what they see, maybe they see something different in you, they're wondering what it is, then you have the opportunity to tell them, it's Jesus, it's not me, believe me, it's not me, it's Jesus. It's Jesus and me because of God's Spirit living in me. And that means, because of your faith in Jesus Christ, by God's Spirit, you all look radiant. To God be the glory. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you have transformed our lives, our lives where we were living in the darkness of our sin and death into the light of Christ, where we have hope and where we know 
that we are going to not only live with you today, but also continue to live with you forever. Lord, we live in a world that is dark of, by sin, and so we pray that as we reflect the Lord's glory through us, that more and more people will see Christ, that they will believe in him, and they will have life in his name. And so, Lord, we pray that when we, as we live our lives, help us to reflect uh, the glory of Christ in our world by the way we live, and when we fail, when we sin, move us to repent and receive your grace and continue to live our lives for you. Lord, we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.